Now one lesson. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I build my charcuterie, my uh, carcucci, my char charcuterie char boards, and now there are all kinds of wood species you can use for charcuterie boards, and the same goes for cutting boards. However, you want to make sure you're using a hard wood. You know, if you use something soft like pine or cedar, it'll gouge faster than prices of gas. Now the three most popular hardwoods for this kind of stuff would be walnut, maple, and cherry, and that's what I'm using. And closer inspecting this piece of walnut, there's definitely a big check at the end of this board, so we're gonna have to make sure we just don't use that section. Now I'm actually building two cutting boards, so I'll need a little bit more stock, and this is some walnut that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up. One good idea is that when you're cutting your stock, Make sure it's a little oversized to start because you can always go back at the end and trim it up to the exact size you want. If you used any other hardwoods and had some good success with charcuterie boards and cutting boards, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to try something new. And these are for gifts. So there's not like I have direction of like, you know, I want this kind of wood or this kind of color or pattern or anything like that. So I'm just trying to come up with some different ideas. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up some strips. I'm gonna leave some wide and some thin and just come up with some different combinations, move the wood around and see what I come up with. Now when you start to cut your strips, always remember the width of the charcuterie board you wanna make. My board's gonna be about eight inches wide. However, when I get everything into a glue up, it's gonna be nine inches wide to start. That way I can cut a little bit off each side to get exactly the width I'm looking for. So here's the two patterns I came up with. The one on the left has walnut edges and cherry in the middle. And the one on the right, I'm going for more of a gradient look. So the left board is maple, and then the middle is cherry, and then one on the right is the walnut. Next, we get to flatten these surfaces. So maybe you got a joiner like this. And if not, maybe you have a table saw. If you do, you could create one of these jointing jigs. These things are pretty cool. You get your board to just hang over the side of the jig. This jig allows you to run it through the table saw, giving you a nice straight edge. Then you could just take it out of the jig and use your freshly cut edge as a reference against your table saw fence. Run it through and you'll have a nice straight board. Or maybe you don't have a table saw and you can just use one of these old hand planes. It doesn't matter what you use as long as you have nice flat edges for your glue up. This is basically the most important part of creating a charcuterie board or maybe even a cutting board. You need the sides to be perfectly flat against each other for the glue up to work. Otherwise, it'll separate down the road. Speaking of glue, next we're gonna add the glue, lots and lots of glue. It's okay to put too much. In fact, I actually prefer it because I wanna see that squeeze out. I'm using Type Bond 3, which is water resistant, since these boards will be washed in the sink. When clamping the boards together in your glue up, you want it to be nice and tight to get a good squeeze out, but not too tight. There is a sweet spot. If you squeeze them too tight, it will actually bow the wood away from your table, from your work surface, and it won't be as flat as you could have it. Now, we are going to, you know, eventually flatten these further, but if you can get it as close to flat now, it just makes that next step a lot easier. Another great tip is once they're glued and you let them sit for about an hour or so and that squeeze out has had time to harden just a little bit, that's when you want to scrape it off. It's much easier to clean it then versus just waiting for it to be fully cured and then trying to scrape it off. Letting them dry overnight is probably plenty enough. I usually give it a full day. Well, how long are you guys going to wait to call your babies? Six, Six days. days.
All right, so from here, you got your blank. So now what you need to do is you need to make sure that each side is planed down, okay? So whether you have a planer or you have a hand plane, however, whatever means you have to get it down to, okay? Um, I'm gonna use my CNC, because that's what I have, so I can just block this down, get one side flat, shim it where I need to, flip it over, and plane the other side. That's what I'm gonna do now, so let me show you how I do that. Now you can see I didn't do exactly a perfect job trying to keep these flat. But with the CNC it's no problem. All we need to do is just shim it up a little bit to get rid of this rocking. I'm using a one inch surfacing bit for this. Now, I just run the program and let it do its thing. And I'm well aware of the debate, you know, using a CNC, is this woodworking? Is it not woodworking? I mean, I use power tools all the time, all over my shop, and I consider this a power tool, so I guess I'll leave that up to you to decide. Now I can just flip this over, remove the shims, and flatten the other side. So after they're plane down, so here's the board I have I just finished. It's perfectly flat on each side. So from here, you know, you don't need a CNC for this part. I mean, you if you have, whether you have a template or, I mean, this easiest thing to do is just draw a shape. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I mean, it could be whimsical if you want. Have it, whatever shape you want, give it a handle, just draw it out there. Then you take your jigsaw, cut around your line, smooth over your edges and you have a charcuterie board, okay? The other thing you could do is if you have a template, you put some double-sided tape on here, stick it on there, and then grab your router with a flush trim bit and just go around and follow your pattern. And then you have it, sand it down, you're good to go. Again, I have the CNC, so that's the method I'm gonna use in this video. There's plenty of other videos to show you how to do it with a jigsaw, with a router, so you can definitely go check those out, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do it on the CNC. So first I cut in a recess in all my charcuterie boards. I just think it helps with keeping like crackers or grapes or whatever from rolling or sliding off the board. Then I switch out to a quarter inch bit and cut the profile of the outside. Next, I take it over to the router table, put a small round over on all the edges, make it easier to hold. And this is where I insert a joke about how much fun it is to sand, or maybe a joke about how everyone hates the sand. You get the idea. I use this old piece of carpet pad to help keep everything in place while I'm sanding it. And I use the pencil trick as I'm sanding, it just lets you know where you've sanded and what spots you've missed. Now the CNC gets a fairly decent finish, so I can actually start at 120 grit here. Of course, you do have to do some hand sanding still in the corners. So after the 120 grit, I switch to 220 grit and give it a good wipe down, spray it with some water all over the board. The water will raise the grain. If you don't do this step, then like the first time you wash this in a sink, that's when the grain will raise and you're gonna feel it, and it won't be as smooth as it could be. So if you spray it with water, let it dry, then hit it with 220 again, it prevents that from happening. Now it's everyone's favorite time, adding the finish. I apologize, I got way out of hand. Let me just shorten this up. 
Anyway, moving right along. This is a special recipe I use for my board butter, I guess you could call it. It's a combination of beeswax and mineral oil. Everything is all food safe. I just apply a generous amount, let it sit for about a day, and buff off the rest. So that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. What you're seeing here is a third board that I created off camera, same exact dimensions. I uh, made this one for my wife. The other two I had to get out for Christmas presents, so I didn't have a chance to get any beauty shots of those. But this is the same dimensions, just a different design. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. Like I said, if you like the video, you can tell me by liking the video. I really appreciate that. And if you think I've earned it, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. I have six, seven, ten other videos out now. And uh, if you like to make or DIY like I do, I think you'll get some good ideas. See you in the next one.